Well, that's the Demi John Mead. Finally got round to racking it. And uh, we're going to wait to see if she clears up a little bit more. If not, we've got to give it some bentonite. I don't know whether prior to that, just to top it up with some more honey. As you can see, the levels dropped down a bit now with the loss from a couple of transfers. So let me know what you think. Uh, if you've done the meads before. Well, it's homebrew Wednesday again. That was a little mead exit. Exert, exert, exit. No, we're not a missile. Yeah, exit. Yeah, they finally got round to doing that. And it looks like spring's here. He's getting hot. Turned the heating off, finally. Now, don't you hate it if you've been at work all week and you have to bring work home with you? I had two as well this week. Or, well, Friday. I had to bring my work home with me. Oh. Well, it's not all bad, is it? From Goddard's Brewery on the Isle of Wight. We've got the Isle of Wight. Ducks Folly, which is an acronym for um, something to do with Lloyd's Bank. Who wouldn't lend them any money? Fuggle de Dum. No guessing what hops are in that one. And Scrum Diggity Bitter. Just for good measure. Also got to try um, the Celia Premium Czech Lager, an organic lager, a gluten-free organic lager. So you may see a video soon. Bringing home a work bonus isn't that bad. A bit dark going on. To reposition the camera. Yeah, so. Ah. Goofy ache. Yeah, we've got these to try. We had um, two of each beer come through. And the governor just happened to be talking beer <coughs> related topics with him. and. Um, Reminded him these were in the warehouse, and he said, "Oh, how many is there?" I said, "Well, it's two of each." He said, "Well, go get them." He said, "We'll have one each. Let me know what you think." <coughs> so, could be a proved taste tester. But talking of bare things related, I um, dug out my king keg. You know the old pressure sphere. <coughs> So I did a while back buy one of these um can't see it from over there, can you? Where's my bloody remote? I've got the camera further away because I've had to move some bits of them way. That if you'll focus. There we go. That's an adapter. Because the barrel caps I've got are uh, two types. You get these ones, which you can't see very well, but there is just a recess through there, and then your non-return valve rubber piece there. Therefore, the S30 cylinders are a bit like the SodaStream cylinder, except they've got that on the end, and you screw that in and use that to charge your vessel. Now I haven't got one of those because they work similar to SodaStream on an exchange basis. You've got to buy one and then exchange it for a refill. Or you can buy this adapter, which is the same thread, but it's got the other style. You can't see because you're not going to focus and there's not enough light, but there's a little pin inside there. Which... Um, pierces the end there that goes in there, it goes in the holder obviously some of you guys are aware of all this but <coughs> it goes inside there a bit like a um, BB gun, CO2 BB guns 
that goes in and as you screw that in that pierces and releases the pressure free obviously you have that screwed on the cap first <coughs> seal as well. This is a good video isn't it? Close up my keyboard. Yeah so that goes on, screw straight on top then your pressurised cartridge goes on there, it pierces, blows the gas into the pressure barrel. I had the adapter and I've had the bulbs and I've had the cake. I was going to do a pressure test and actually fill it with some water and uh, just make sure it's serviceable before I uh, put it into use. But, uh, seems I don't know how long ago it was last used and on closer inspection there's a little rubber seal goes around the top and that is all perished and broke up and you can buy a little basically a seal replacement kit. The nut on the inside is made of metal and is rusty so that means cleaning up. Um, inside, you can see there, there's a little rubber sleeve that goes over the end there which acts as a, a non-return valve. So we're going to try and use the keg. So obviously I've just got to buy a seal kit to replenish the fittings on there and just check the tap um, it's the king keg one with the tap halfway or two thirds of the way at the top with the last stock float inside so that it sits on top of the beer and as the beer is consumed it drops down um, but I think the float's missing I haven't seen one complete I know I've it came with I had another fermenting bin come with the lot that I bought and there is a brand new one in a pack, but I haven't actually dug that out to have a look to see if there is a like a little um, plastic piece that goes on the end to act as a float. I know they can be problematic and basically detach while you're using them. Um, and then you've just got a pipe hanging there and it doesn't work very well. But I believe there is a modified version on the market. So we're going to give the keg a go and just have it on the table where I normally have the cement the barrels. Just one, it will save bottling up. I think obviously I'll still bottle some in case I want to send any out. But uh, I want to try that keg. I've got another two old boots ones as well, but room's a bit limited um, until I can do something more kegerator styly, which isn't going to happen yet because I haven't got any room behind behind the camera to do anything like that at the minute because I'm still pending bedroom refrits, decorating and builders coming in and knocking walls out and <coughs> other bits and pieces. So we're going to have a go with them and unfortunately these don't fit BB guns, they're too fat. So you've got like another lot for your BB guns. Anyway, I've waffled on for probably 10 minutes now, and one in essential ingredient is missing. And I have the glass, it's a Grolsch glass, so we better try it. Our generous friend from Yorkshire. But I don't tell everyone, we don't want to give him a bad name. Mr. Ant Rogerson's Grolsch type all grain using a liquid yeast. Now, as you can see, she is crystal clear at the minute. Now, I've had them sitting here in a box and I heard a little noise the other night. I didn't take much notice of it. I was sitting there on watching something on YouTube or Facebook and I heard it again and I thought is it just feedback from the speakers or interference or something and that sounds like a, a bottle cap sizzling and it was on a closer investigation started digging out several beers 
it was the lager. The top wasn't quite on square. I've re recrimped it <coughs> and it's holding now so hopefully there's a little bit more activity in there to ferment a little bit more. It may or may not be flat we don't know yet. <coughs> but we'll leave it a little while to see if it can recover. Better. Long well since I've had a grosh. It smells lagery. She's boring good, nice and clear. The yeast is staying down in the bottle. Try and get as much of it as I can because I'm as tight as a Yorkshireman. Oh, here comes the yeast. And yeah, we'll call off there. Yeah. Little bit there for the dogs. <coughs> Frothy head there. It is a nucleated glass or nucleated. Etched at the bottom, so it activates that. She's well carved. <coughs> Certainly the glass is doing its trick, but there's a, an absolute storm going on in there. You'd think that was off the tap. It's nice and sharp. <coughs> Crystal clear still. Didn't get any of the yeast picked up. Just knocked off at the right time ago. Clean white, fluffy head. not know this was a homebrew. Can't compare it to a Grolsch because I haven't got one and I haven't had one for like absolutely ages. <coughs> but yeah, it will make, hmm. you'll have to let me know where the recipe was for this one. Um, and is, it in, is it in our book or is it a uh, from other sources. <coughs> yeah, mm. dripping over me trousers. Yeah, so we've got some bentonite as well because the old mead's not been clearing. There wasn't an awful lot of uh, drop of leaves in the bottom of the last demijohn. It seems to be a lot <coughs> in suspension. Um, you, well, obviously, I've transferred it, it stirs it up, but yeah, you can see like a cloud floating around. I tell you what, this knocks the pants off crap like San Miguel and Stella, <coughs> which are the last commercial lagers I drank at a pub. Could have done with. Knocking the temperature down a little bit, really, but that's jolly bloody nice. No twang to it. <coughs> Got a little bit of hot bitterness, a little bit of flavour. <sighs> Sit here watching me for the next five minutes drinking this. You're already hitting back on your brazer, right there. <coughs> anyway, that's pretty much it. Apart from one thing, I keep seeing reoccur in forums is not bottled water from the supermarkets. Cloudy star sand. Oh, dump it once it's cloudy. I haven't used this one today. But I did test it. I did have some pH strips. But they are for swimming pools and they're too high. But I have got my pH meter. 
and it's still reading a pH of 2, which according to the website, anything below anything below well gas CO2, anything below 3.5 on a pH is still usable. I haven't tried it, just in case I didn't want to ruin the mead after all this time. So I used a fresh of a batch of uh, star sand. But what are your thoughts? Because I am still going to use it. I know one of those bottles goes a long way, but uh, I may well use this on a Demijohn test batch for one of those little malt extracts. So, you know, worst case scenario if it doesn't quite do the job. Although there's no real proof that it would be this failed and the infection's not from somewhere else. But. I did watch a long while ago in Melatius done a test over a period of time with a load of carboys, I think it were, or demijohns, full of star sand um, using bottled water, RO water, I think distilled water, spring water, tap water, all sorts. Some went cloudy, some went cloudy over time. And he tested those with the pH strips and <coughs> sort of blew the myth that um, when it goes cloudy it's not usable anymore. Now immediately mine is, I, my water profile is classed as very hard. I've downloaded the data um, and put it in a brew calculator. So it will go cloudy immediately. That's bottled water and I've got the Tesco's aspect. It will go cloudy in the aspect water um, within one use, whether it's to do a little bit of oxygen there or just where you're rinsing stuff out with your tap and there's a little bit of cross contamination of uh, water getting in to the bottled water. But what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think some of it is a little bit, not scaremongering, but obviously. I know Craig done a, a mention on this quite some time back on Star Sand and one of the guys who was one of the scientists at the company sort of backed up what it said but then another guy who I think was being interviewed said something else because obviously he's thinking of marketing and if they're saying dump it because it ain't no good because that means you're going to use another lot which means you're going to get through a bottle quicker where if you're a Tight wad like me, <coughs> you'll keep using it, and that bottle will last longer, and you won't buy as many. Which, to my mind, is more what they're uh, doing. They want you to keep buying it. No one's knocking the product; it does what it says on the on the can. But uh, obviously, it does last a long while, which isn't obviously brilliant for their sales. They want you to keep using it. There are obviously other. I noticed there is a car, I think, is it Malt Miller? Or well, one of the other Humbro shops is doing the same chemical compounds. There's two compounds to make stuff, so in it. They basically duplicated it and called it something else. And it's got the same chemicals. It does exactly the same job. But I think it was a lot, I don't know whether it, it was dearer, but I don't know whether you got a little wee bit more in their bottle than you did the star, so. Um, well, I have looked at the brewery cleaning stuff that comes in sort of gallon cans or even 20 litre jerry cans, the big thing. But obviously the amount we use over a course of a year is not really, unless you're brewing on a large scale, is it viable to buy a 20 litre <coughs> one? Cost wise, I can't remember what they were, those are about 30, some of them are 30 quid, some of them are 20 odd for a brewery cleaner, as opposed to I think the, the larger of the two star sand uh, is about 17 quid over here in the UK, and the small one is about 12, 13. I suppose it's about 15 dollars, something like that. Well, I've had that one for months now, and I've only sort of made, made three or four batches up out of it. I've just got a little syringe that I use for measuring 
um, into the four litre jugs. So I just pre-mix one of these and keep these until it's time to tip out. I think I've redone this one. And I've got another one I bought. <coughs> and I've got another one as backup, which I was going to use for a mead. And then I never used it. So I've got another one to make if I need to. But that's about it. My extended waffle in style set. And a jolly nice lager. A grosky. Very smooth. Seems I'm having a job swallowing. <coughs> anyway, I will see you next week. Hopefully, I won't touch wood. Or maybe I should. Hang on, I'll get the wife's leg. No, I might get one done <coughs> so I can try that barrel. I've got to do a water test first. I've got to order the washers. <laughs> Stir plate wise, I'll update you next week. I have got the speed controller. You can see that. It's just a PC motherboard style plug. You can't see it because it's dangling about. Anyway, the magnets worked. And the stair bar worked. I put it in the um, flask. But when you got the speed up a little bit, she went <laughs> like a Sky Electrics car. <clears throat> so I don't think the magnets are holding enough magnetism. And I think oh, I've lost the bloody things now. Anyway, they're little screw. They've got a little cup. So when you've got it up the right way, you've got the magnet. And when you turn one round the other way, so you've got reverse pulls on the two magnets so that the stair bar the other one's shielded by the steel cup that's um, sitting over it so I think I'll see the magnetic fields weaker on one side than the other because as you speed it up you can see the stair bar starts to break away so obviously one strong magnet is holding one end and the other one's losing it and it goes off <coughs> and it's just at that point where you start getting the vortex pulling down so I've ordered some um, N52 rear earth magnets or something and they should be here tomorrow so I think and I've ordered another bargain if you know how much citra hops are in the UK they're about I think 550 for 100 grams I've got 500 grams coming for 18 quid bar 5p £17.95 for half a kilo and that included the postage <clears throat> so I think I might need a freezer for all my hops <sighs> but more on that later <laughs> when we get the brew shed done I don't think there'll be enough room for the freezer in there but I have got a plan Stay tuned for the next inciting, next exciting instalment. There we go. It's better. It's not exciting, is it? I'm waffling. I'm going.